I'm Marvin Haddad. I'm the How to Buy a Mansion guy. I'm going to critique Architectural Digest tour of Jimmy Butler's mansion so when you design, build, or buy your mansion, you won't make the same mistakes. Let's watch it together. Hey, AD. I'm Jimmy Butler. Welcome to California, better yet. Welcome to my house. Okay, if you're impressed by his hairstyle, this is not even his best hairdo. What I'm super impressed by is how of an amazing real estate investor he is. I'm gonna cover that section at the end of the video. I think fancy people call this a foyer. It's a foyer, you don't pronounce the R. We got art, it is a ton of space to do absolutely nothing. This is actually probably the most pointless area in the house. Jimmy, calling the foyer of a property the most pointless area is like calling the first, second, and third quarter of a basketball game completely pointless. It has a purpose. It creates the anticipation. It sets the mood. It sets the standard. It gives you a glimpse of what's about to come. It's called the reception. It's absolutely necessary, Jimmy. The designer I worked with, Tiffany. Tiffany Brooks Interior. I was just telling her, yo, get freaky with it. That's really smart. He's hired the top designer and have let her loose. Otherwise, the design would have had two different personalities. When you hire someone, your idea should be like, give me your designs. I'll tell you which ones I don't like. But if you start micromanaging your designer, your design's going to be neither this nor that. This is like my live music room. When I say live music room, I mean, if any of my musical friends are coming over, this is where we set them up. Okay, here's the formal living space, and he has given it utility by putting a piano there because he likes to do karaoke. And that's super important because most formal living spaces never get used. And that's sad because they're most of the time positioned at the prime location for the property. It's right after the foyer and the front door. So the wow factor is there. When you open the door, you're greeted by this really wide, double tall ceiling foyer and it's then backed up by this great room which the curtains are closed which is again backed up by a view and a backyard an amazing space can you spot the flaw i sometimes pause the frame so my subscribers can get better at spotting the flaws i'll give you three seconds three two one there's no stove Tiffany f***ed up. She forgot the stove in the kitchen. It's like a glorified snack station at this point. I don't know. I looked everywhere in this video and I couldn't freaking find a stove. There's no stove here. This place is called the conservatory. Okay, you can think of a conservatory as the sunroom, okay? It's an area position that would have a lot of windows so the natural light would come. It's really more popular in, you know, East Coast where it gets really cold in winter time. So you have the sunroom where the sun comes up and heats up the room and is mostly positioned in a south facing direction. And amazingly, this property is also is south facing, meaning in the northern hemisphere, you get the most amount of sun on south facing properties. So this property is going to be lit. It is hot in this room between this hot ass window and these windows. It is hot in here. The chandelier. Okay, this chandelier is a huge mistake. I mean, most chandeliers in this house are horrible for how good everything else is. First of all, it doesn't fit the space. It's way too small for how large this room is. And then the part that they've gone custom, they've kind of missed the mark. This does not go with the ambiance of this Italian floors on the bottom, which was really beautiful. All these, you know, steel windows around. It just, it completely misses the mark, right? Tiffany did design it. She picked a, uh, just, there's too many shape light bulbs up there. Yeah, <laughs> Tiffany f***ed up. Now we are in. This is the reception area. This is like when you walk in, you greet it. But again, look at the chandeliers. I'm sure you've seen this style. I mean, they're kind of more custom. I think the colors are different, but again, very typical chandeliers that you would see in all different types of homes. But look at the ambiance. I don't think I've ever seen a wine cellar that combines the old and the new in such a beautiful, subtle way like this. It's very, very impressive. Not a big fan of the chairs. Look how beautiful this is. And ironically, it looks like a basketball stadium, doesn't it? Where the bottles or the fans looking in. Again, beautiful execution. It's simple. 
it's old and new. I think anyone from any age category would love this wine cellar. We're at my domino table slash card table. I started playing dominoes when I was probably like four. And it's how my dad taught me how to count. And ever since then, I've just been the best at it. So when I was doing my research about him, because I don't watch NBA, I'm more of a Premier League soccer guy. There were even rumors about him being the son of Michael Jordan. It's kind of crazy. But before we go to this next segment, can we zoom out and really appreciate how beautifully and comfortably this house sits on this lot? Look at the frontage. Look at that motor court, right? And look at the facade of the building. It's beautiful, Italian, authentic style. It's not one of these like American wannabes. And then you have a pretty decent backyard. You have views, mountain views. It's not the greatest view, but it's mountain views. You're on a golf course. And then you have the other best slot at the end of the cul-de-sac as your extra backyard where he's put his you know, basketball court in. And it's pretty damn private, except this like couple houses on the ridge above you that kind of look into the other lot where the basketball court is it's not really in san diego it's in poway which is you know inland suburbs i would give this location a c minus a d plus it's certainly not del mar it's not la jolla and it's definitely not rancho santa fe and the property itself is 15,800 square feet, which is massive. You're not going to see all of it in this video. He has done an amazing job renovating it. And by the end of this video, where you find out how much is actually paid for this house, it's going to blow your mind. A lot goes on out here, you know, pool, cabana over there, kitchen, sand volleyball. The craziest part about the sand volleyball court is it used to be a tennis court. And then I was like, I don't even like tennis. So I got a great idea. Let's just dump in 20 tons of sand on top of it. And then the following summer, you fall in love with tennis. That's how stupid I am. So now I gotta figure out a place to put a tennis court. We work out on the sand, just a different way. Okay, optically, I love sand volleyball courts way more than tennis courts. And I'm a tennis player. It's just more of a California vibe thing. It's way more inviting. This is my spot. This is the first Big Face Coffee Shop here, my own home. Okay, at the first glance, this looks like a huge mistake. And I would agree, for resale value, anyone who buys this property is not going to keep a freaking mock-up of his coffee shop idea in the property, right? But as a business decision, it's pretty smart. Basketball players don't have that many tax write-offs. And he's using his house for two purposes. One is basketball, right? Like he's training there. He's built a basketball court. He can depreciate part of the asset and expenses that he's renovated in. But he's also could use this coffee shop as a location to sell franchisees, right? Invite people over and be like, this is the concept. This is the example. This is what you need to execute and also wholesale his coffee and depreciate the asset. Again, a very smart business decision. Okay, here is the formal dining area. Great space. It seems like the table is a little bit small for this space. I would have expected, you know, at least a 10 person dining table over here. The chandelier is nothing impressive and the artwork is way too much duplicated. Again, I think it's it's a little overwhelming for the space and I'm not digging the furniture, but the actual size of the dining room is fantastic. We are on this landing upstairs above the entry slash foyer. Okay, yes, it's the upstairs landing, but it's a pretty tight landing. I mean, you land on the hallway, right? There's no upstairs living area, open living space that I saw in the video. So that could be a negative. If we're a property of this magnitude, it would have been nice to have an upstairs living area. <laughs> This is my bed. Okay, I'm really not impressed by the primary bedroom. It looks too narrow and too long. It just doesn't have the width. And I hate when they use the cheap wallpapers like this, where you can see the line between. In general, I personally think wallpaper should be used as an accent, not to like, you know, do the whole room with it. My bathroom. I mean, it's a bathroom. It got two toilets. It got two showers. Tiffany wanted a standalone tub. Tiffany got a standalone tub. I'm gonna take the credit for this one. I did ask for Florida stealing marble actually. And I knew that this was marble. I definitely did. It was my idea to start on the floor and take it to the ceiling. Okay, this was a risky choice, but I think he just might have pulled it off. The reason I say that is that the type of marble he has used 
is very simple. There's a little bit of color. There's a little bit of character. And it's a warm marble with kind of a matte finish. And I think if he had gone for a more busy pattern, it would have been way too overwhelming and it would have shown its age very quickly. Over here, I think it works. Okay, here's why I think this is a great real estate investment for Jimmy. I don't know what you're thinking. Arvin, come on. This is the A plus house in the C minus neighborhood. You've told us this. This should have been in Rancho Santa Fe. Look, typically I would agree. But the fact that he bought this property during COVID at $4.3 million, 15 thousand eight hundred thousand square feet of living space and two huge lots that adds up to two and a half acres of flat space in a gated community with an HOA that is only two grand a month for this size of a property it's unheard of to bring it all together I think purchasing the A++ house in a C- minus or D plus neighborhood in an area that has great growth potential is actually a very good move and when you put on top of that, that he's got a steal of $4.3 million for the two lots and the house he bought, I think is a fantastic decision he's made. And he's been depreciating this asset, all the expenses he's done because he's using it for his business, his multiple businesses, right? A basketball player and a coffee entrepreneur. Now, 60 miles away from this property, right in San Clemente, there's a property that is right next to a nuclear power plant. And I've critiqued that one. If you want to watch that one, click over here. If you want to consult with me, the link is in the description. Otherwise, I'll see you guys in the comment section. Take care. See you later.